our stage a couple times before, and who better to have kick off our Westminster, Westminster chapter than Nancy James. It's been snow, right? Yeah, it's snow, right? <laughs> yes, true. And other times it seemed to snow, so I'm glad it didn't. It's not glad and that's it. So this is awesome. I'll read a little intro. Are we live now? All right. So you can share us. Yeah. All right. Westminster. Nancy Gaines is CEO, founder of Gaines Advantage, Gain Advantages, Inc., and has been advising small businesses and Fortune 100 companies how to increase revenues through proven systems for almost two decades. She's a best-selling author and international keynote speaker. Nancy has been named in the top 100 productivity experts to follow on Twitter and has a global podcast downloaded in over 65 countries. Her main focus is creating business processes with actionable steps so her clients achieve more consistency, ease, and ultimate success. Please help me welcome Nancy Gaines. Woo Thank you. Let's do it one more time. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Passion ignites action. Okay. Passion. Passion. Ignites action. Awesome. <laughs> This is so exciting to be the first speaker at Westminster Boost Biz Ed North. So who lives around here? Raise your hand if this is so much more convenient. Oh, yeah. Okay, yes. awesome. Well, thanks for coming out. Before I get started, um, I want to just kind of survey the room. I think everybody's a business owner, right? If you're an employee, can you just raise your hand so I can tailor? You are employees? Okay, couple. And the rest of you own your business. Perfect. I'd ask I'd like to know who is a morning person? Raise your hand high. Where are my morning people? Okay, where are my night owls? Thank you. And where is the you raise both? Rest of you guys, where, where do you fall? Where do you who else is in the middle? Nobody? Morning and night. Okay. Remind me before we wrap up today to tell you the one thing, the single one thing. If you do this one thing, you are totally gonna increase your productivity. So make sure I don't walk out of here in 45 minutes without that. Really important point. So if you're here today, I suspect some of you want to increase something in your life, right? Maybe increase your business bank account. Maybe increase your relationships. Because you're working so many hours, you don't get to see your kids or your family. Maybe you want to increase your health. If this is a year, you're just going to be in top health. Others of you may want to decrease something. Decrease the stress and overwhelm and shiny objects of running a business because it's not as easy as we all thought, right? Right. It's kind of challenging. Maybe some of you want to drop a few pounds. You want to decrease your size on the universe, but you don't have time to go out and do that. And some of you maybe want to decrease frictions in your home life. So we're going to work on all of it. You are all in the right place with shiny objects today. So we're going to knock, knock it out of the park. Would it be okay if I share just a little bit about my story, how I got here? Sure. Thank you. So, I worked for almost 16 years with IBM. I consulted to great companies. I had an expense account. I got to go to six countries. It was an amazing job. I liked being an employee. And one day, and here's why I liked it. It was simple. Somebody told me what to do, and I just did it. I had a lot of autonomy, but somebody was always above me telling me exactly what needed to be done in my day. Fast forward to being a business owner, I thought it would be a slam dunk, right? I consulted to these CEOs of Fortune companies, helped them grow their companies. And I'm talking like Lenovo and Applebee's and Office Max and Shell and IBM. You've heard of these companies. Like I really made an impact with them. So how hard could it be to run Nancy Gaines? You guys are laughing, huh? <laughs> well, here's what I realized. I was constantly having to make my own schedule and make sure I was getting my work done and holding myself accountable and laying out my work. So I was having this constant teeter between being the boss and being the employee. Who knows what I'm talking about? Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So when I was in my boss mode, I was, like as you were saying earlier, I'm getting out of my, I'm gonna work on my business, not in my business. So I'd be making these marketing plans, and I'd be making these financial plans, and all of the while my head was going, I really need to be doing this, or I need to be doing that. And instead of, and then I would shift into the worker mode, and I would be doing all the stuff and thinking, I should not be doing this. I need to be looking over my business and making my, my big grand plan. So I can never get my mind in the right mode. Who knows what I'm talking about? Does this happen to you too? 
You're doing something and your mind is telling you you should be doing something else. So I figured out three, just three tips to tell you guys today to get out of that mode. And if you have figured this out, please share your ideas with the rest of the group because it, you gotta be in the right zone to do the right thing or it's gonna just take you too long. So let me kick off, and again, remind me that one thing, okay? Somebody make a note. Who's really good at taking notes? Okay, Ashley, you're in charge of that. So by the end of this talk, you're gonna find how easy systems are to simplify your life. How you can just set your business and forget it so it runs without you, so you can focus on different things. So I made a little handout for you to take notes. Now we're at the top where it says, My Big Rocks. So the first lesson is H-A-B-U. Write that down, H-A-B-U. It stands for highest and best use of your time. Highest and best use. So traditional time management is dead. So if you're thinking this is all about time management, it's not about time management because, so when I was a kid, I don't know how old you guys are, we had this phone that connected to the wall. One in the house, <laughs> one phone, it was called a landline. And you had to share that with your entire family. And if somebody else was on the phone, you had to wait till they were done, or you keep picking it up to annoy them. You know, are you, are you off the phone? Are you, off, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. <laughs> and if you called another person who was using their phone, you'd get a busy signal. Does anyone know what the busy signal is? Here are my millennials. <laughs> Come on in if you're here for boost. We got a seat. No. No? It's not locked, is it? Now it's open. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and then the pager came out. Do you guys remember the pager? It was a little square that went on your butt, and it would kind of shake you when it went off. And it was almost like, um, kind of like early day texting. It just had a number on there, and unless you recognized the number, you didn't know who it was. And you had to go find a phone. Go inside, find a phone, or find a pay phone. That's the way it worked. Okay, so that was easy to have time management. There was two things you had to manage, a phone and a pager. Now, there's like 20 social medias. There's Skype, there's video, there is your smartphone. There's all this stuff going on, so if you're thinking you can manage it all, give it up because it's not possible. I'm gonna teach you how to just focus on the few things that you need to know so you don't have to worry about traditional time management. This isn't about blocking out the time. This is, all, this is even better. So highest and best use. So I want you to see, can everyone see my prop? This is your day. Okay, this is your day, or your business, whatever you want to call it. And your day starts out, and you answer a few emails. And maybe you write an email or a newsletter, and you decide the font needs to be bigger, so you mess around with the font. Make a few phone calls. So this has taken up your time, right? It's 10 o'clock by now. And pretty soon, your day. It's just, we're just gonna dump all this in here. These are all these little rocks taking up your time. You're gonna check some posts on social media. Watch a podcast. On and on. And then you're like, I need to work on something more important than this. Those are all the little things that are easy to get out of the way. So, you've got a big rock. These are the projects of your day. This one says live event. How many of you put on conferences? Anybody put on conferences besides Drew? Bob? Yep, these take a lot of time, right? So this is a little bit bigger, so it's gonna take more time. So you put one of these in, and then you go back and you get distracted by shiny objects. And then you're like, oh yeah, now I need to create that product launch. I'm gonna create a new coaching product that I can send out. So you put that in. You guys see what's happening here? Your day is getting more and more filled and let me do a couple more of these little activities. Yeah, I need to write more chapters in my book. That's my big rock. And you put this in. Oh, 
My family. I gotta start working on my family. My marketing plan. I didn't finish my marketing plan. And all of a sudden your day is full and you've only got to a few of the important things. And you spend all your time on these little unimportant things. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Now, tell me on your piece of paper, I want you guys to take a second and write down what is a big rock that would really move your business forward? If you spent time on this event, whatever yours is, how could your business really grow? Is it spending an hour on cold calls? Is it going to more networking? Write down just one big rock in your life. I'll give you about 30 seconds. If you've got two, you can write two. Maybe it's getting your website done. Okay, I'm going to call on people I know. <coughs> Bob, what's a big rock you have? Uh, right now is going to be obviously finished for the site. Perfect. Denise, what's a big rock you have? Picking up that phone. Picking up the phone and doing mm -hmm. some calls? Yes. Okay. Paul, what's a big rock? Um, I'm expanding one of my businesses into Texas, so I have to call just a few treasurers down there. There are only about 254 of them. <laughs> Carol, what's a big rock? Blog. Blog. Blog or newsletter. Yeah. Perfect. And one more. Who else would give me one? Yes, in the back. Call existing clients. And, and sell them more things or make sure they're happy? Make sure they're happy and tell them about the new benefits to the them. Okay, perfect. So nine out of ten business owners are working on things that aren't making their money. They're working on these little rocks that are just eating up at their time and by the end of the day you have no energy left for the big rocks. And can you imagine the difference if you just spent some time on that big rock, how much your business would grow? 25%, 30% more? So here's the, here's the purpose of this. What if you put all your big rocks in first? Your marketing plan, your live events, working on your health, scaling and expanding. We got a couple process people in here. Your book, what if you did all these first? They all fit in, right? Pretty powerful. Who's seen this analogy before? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, they come with sand and water, but I wasn't going to mess up your, your room, Carol. <laughs> but this is the whole thing about highest and best use. You've got to schedule your day every morning so that you're focusing on the things that really move your business forward and not the busy things, not the things that are easy to get off your plate. Now, I do this too. I'm like, well, I can just do that. That will take 10 minutes, and that will take 10 minutes, and I could do that. One hour later, you've got six things done that don't move you forward, and your big rocks are still sitting in there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So number one, highest and best use of your time, you need to be doing the big rocks and not the little rocks. How many of you are thinking, well, how do the little rocks get done? I still need to get that done. Is anyone thinking that? Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. You've got to systemize your little rocks. Systemize your follow-up. Systemize your sales your lead generation, systemize how you collect your money, systemize your blog, systemize your social media. If you can systemize all that, it creates the time for you to go on to do the bigger stuff. So let me pause here. Any questions so far or some thoughts? Any ahas? Like this, I'm not, who's working on their big rock right now? Anybody? Good, good. Who's not working on their big rock and needs a little help reprioritizing? Some days. Some days, <laughs> right. As long as you put an hour aside for your big rock every day, slowly by slowly, it's, it's kind of like losing weight. I used to be about 25 pounds heavier. People always think I just was this size and I'm just lucky and I can eat. I was, there was like another fourth of me. And one day, the only reason I realized I was fat was I was at this bar. And this man walks by and he goes, how did you get all of that into those skinny jeans? And I was like, oh, what a jerk. And then I went home and looked in the mirror. I was like, oh, he's right. <laughs> he was exactly right because I wasn't spending the hour of the day to focus on that. So 
I spend an hour a day to shrink it down, but it's the same thing in your business. You just spend an hour a day and you can, and you can get it down. So, how many of you guys realize having a few more systems can make you more time? Awesome. Okay, the next one, lesson number two. Email is not your to-do list. Email is not your to-do list. I've seen so many clients use their email list as a to-do list. In fact, my husband's given me permission to share this story. He says his email is, is his to-do list. I said, so what do you mean? You wake up and whatever other people tell you to do, that's what you do. Don't you have a big rock? Don't you have some projects you have to do? He goes, oh yeah, I've got, you know, I've got to do this SOW and I've got to map roles and responsibilities here and I've got to get this RFP out. And I said, aren't those your main projects? How can you let email keep interrupting you? So we're going to spend some time on email. Is anyone else distracted by email? Okay. Email is somebody else's agenda imposed on you. How many times do you really get an email of someone just saying, you know, you're doing great, hello? No, they want stuff. Every email is they want something from you. So think of your inbox more as a kind of a collection, a container. How many of you would like to get your email down to just a handful? Anyone interested in that? I don't think zero is, is realistic. I've seen a lot of courses get it down to zero. I don't think that's, there's always going to be something coming in. But what you can do is to sort it. So the next line says, my email folders. I'm going to give you four tips there. On the first line, write action where it says the little at sign. The action folder, and here's a trick too, if you put the A sign before a folder name, it will sort at the very top of your inbox. So you're not trying to find action along with F's and the G's and the Z's, it's, everything will show up there. What goes in your action folder? So anytime an email comes in, if you have to take an action on it, you just slide it over to that folder and spend some time later going through that whole folder. So somebody needs something from you, you need to make a decision, um, you need to respond to something, all of those are actions. It's not a place where you're like, well I think I'm going to decide what to do about it. It's, you know the action and that's where it goes. Your second folder is read, R-E-A-D. Things that you have to read. I know I get a lot of stuff of interesting stuff to read, but if I take the time to read it, it's going to take me off track of my big rock. So the second is read. The third folder is waiting. You're waiting on somebody to give you something. It's a great way to follow up, the waiting folder. And the last folder is going to be reference. So things that you may need down the road but not right now, but you don't want to delete it. So action, read, waiting, reference. So periodically throughout the day, whether you want to do it once an hour, if you're feeling kind of like you've got to stay in touch with your email, once an hour, take 10 minutes and just move things into the right folder. That way your landing spot for your inbox is empty. Make sense? And then a different time in the day, decide when are you going to do your reading? When are you going to do your actions? When are you going to you follow up on people you're waiting for? Make sense so far? That way you're just messing with four folders and not one big list. So here's why people feel so connected to their inbox. And I'm totally guilty of this first one. What if there's something important in there? Right? I don't want to miss this. What if there's like somebody is like inviting me to do something, what if there's a client in there, what if it's really important? And if you're an employee, you might be feeling, I need to be in the loop. What if somebody is going to ask me something in the hallway and I didn't read that and then I look silly? So people don't want to just let their email go because they're afraid something's in there and I do that a lot. So I've, once you sort it, you, you feel this confidence of, oh, these I just need to read. These I just need to take some action on. These are waiting for someone, and this is just some reference folder. Does that make sense? How many of you think you could use this? Pretty easy, right? The other reason people are stuck to their email 
They don't have a plan. So they go to their email, hoping the email will tell them what to do. Right? They don't wake up and say, these are my big rocks that are painted on a whiteboard. And these are things that will take my business forward. I don't, I don't know what my big rocks are. I will go look at my email, and it will tell me exactly what I need to do. Because it's other people's agenda. So there's comfort in knowing I don't have to decide to do. Someone else will give it to me. Did you have a question back there? Or step to stretching? Okay. And the third reason people are so attached to their email, <coughs> it's a distraction. They know they're supposed to work on their big rocks, but the big rocks are big. I'll just go take a break and read my email. It keeps, I'm, I'm feeling busy, but I'm not being productive. So three things that people use their email for. Their to-do list, their distractions, and just, I'm afraid to let go. Is this helpful? Yeah? Okay, let me know if I'm going too fast. I want to keep you guys energized on this. So, when I coach with people, we come up with a way to systemize their email so it's very easy to know what's going on. How many of you know there's comfort when you know when you've got clarity? Remember I was talking about shifting between the boss mode and the employee mode? My first job, I worked in the Park District. I don't know if you call that here in Denver, Park District. I worked in the concession stand. I made popcorn and sold popcorn and hot dogs and snow cones. And it was the easiest job ever because I walked in and there was a checklist of what I needed to do. Heat up the oil in the popcorn. It was one of those kind where the windows open and the big pot in the middle. So you put one stick of oil in there and after it melts, you pour one cup of kernels in there. You wait five minutes and when the popcorn starts coming over the side, I dumped it out. I'm like, check, that was easy. I'd walk over to the snow cone machine, I'd put the ice in, and then I would do the blue, the yellow, and the red. It was so easy, there was no thinking. I could do my job in my sleep. How many of you guys know when you know how to do something, you could just do it, it's not a matter of you're out of time, you can go on lightning fast speed when you know exactly what needs to be done, and just knock it out. The challenge as business owners is actually planning out the steps. Like, Drew, isn't it easier when you're making a website and someone just says, here's what I want on every page? Sure, absolutely. And your team just builds it, right? Mm -hmm. Or blogs, Carol. When you're writing the blog, if you know your points, isn't it easy? You just sit down and write it. Yeah. But coming up with the points? Mm -hmm. The thinking behind the stuff. <laughs> the thinking. Yeah. So as business owners, we have to separate the thinking from the doing. And what happens is, you're, you're going to mess up a lot of time and waste a lot of time if you just jump right into doing it because then you're like, oh, I wish I would have thought of that. I need that. So as a business owner, this is point number three. Spend 20 minutes to save you 20 hours. That's point number three. 20 minutes will save you 20 hours. I know it sounds like a Geico commercial, <laughs> but truly, if you took the 20 minutes to plan out what's going to go on the website page by page, or a landing page, or the blog, or how you're going to tackle Texas. What was the other big rock? Who else had a big rock? Calling existing clients. Calling existing clients. Maybe you figure out um, you're going to talk to this group on about this topic. So then you're in a flow, and you're like, I know I'm going to promote this next thing to these 10 people. These people I'm going to follow up with and say, thanks for purchasing in the last 30 days. How was your experience? And then this group is something else. 20 minutes will save you so much time. Can I tell you guys a story about this weekend? So I had a friend in from California, and we went hiking. So it's a lot, California's pretty flat, so we kind of wore her out. And Friday night, we just five miles. I'm like, whatever, five miles. But she was, she was tired. Um, but she's an amazing girl. We're sitting around our fire pit on our front deck, and we're watching the sun go down. And we're just chatting, and drinking some wine, and it's pitch dark, and I'm kind of done for the night, because it was a big hike, for, even for me. And two cars pull up at the bottom of our driveway. Now, some of you have been at my house. It's kind of remote in Morrison. We don't have a lot. Of, we're all like on four acres, five acres. So we're kind of spread out. But there's been a lot of thefts of mail and packages in our area. So when I see two cars pull up at the bottom of our driveway, I go up to the deck and I look out. and. 
somebody gets out of her car, and she yells to the other car. It turns out it was my neighbor. And she, they're bringing this big piece of furniture up their driveway, and it's, she's like, we need to resituate it. So my husband yells down, hey, come on up for some wine. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm already tired, but she comes up. We're sitting up there, and we're talking about her new job. She works for a nonprofit, and she said the, the director's really frustrated because things aren't moving as fast as he wants them to go. How many of us feel that in our business sometimes? You're like, I thought I'd be here by now, and it's a while. And she said the other day, he actually went out. There was a homeless family that came in. He went to Target to buy $80 worth of backpacks so this family would have something to tote their things around with, which was awesome. But here I am, business productivity thinking, Habu, Habu, is this really the highest and best use of his time? He's an executive director. He should not be getting in his car, spending two hours going to Target to get this stuff. And then we find out one block away was Denver Rescue Mission. That's kind of by Deuce, right? Mm -hmm. And they have this whole crate of backpacks that they have so many backpacks that they can't take any more backpacks. So we have this logistic issue, right? So this family needs backpacks at the center. This place has too many backpacks. In fact, this is a problem with food, too. My husband used to work for Chipotle, and they would try to donate their extra food to the people that need food. And there's too much food, like in this one place, and there's not enough food in the other place. So all this logistic stuff going on. And I'm thinking, what if this person just stepped back for 20 minutes and thought, how could this be better? Instead of, we get into this do, do, do mode as business owners, right? We kind of freak out. We don't have enough time. Let's just get it in here and get it done. He would have stepped back and said, wait, I can make one quick phone call to my neighbor and see if they've got some backpacks. What if we combine and do stuff like that? So this is a perfect thing. I'm like, I need to share this at Boost, how 20 minutes can save you hours over time. So that's my story. What do you guys think? Kind of makes sense, right? We jump into writing a book. You're an author. Did you write that in one sitting? No. Did you map out your chapters? No. <laughs> <laughs> so how would it have been a little bit different is if you said, I'm going to have 10 chapters and it's going to be, the flow of the book will be better, right? It probably took you maybe twice as long and lots of editing. So, and I'm sure it's an amazing book. <laughs> Come buy a copy from her if you want that book. But this is how it is in our business. So 20 minutes of just sitting back and really thinking about it. And so your big rocks. The reason they're big rocks for a lot of people is we just look at them. So let me pull out a rock that I'm, I'm working on. OK, write book. <laughs> how funny that this is. <laughs> I've had my book done since, my third book done since November, and I have not signed off on the cover for some reason. The cover is completely done, and I don't know why I'm holding back. I think I'm waiting to readjust the book to find someone to write my forward. I pretty much just decided I don't need a forward, and now part of me says don't sign off because I'm going to find someone to write it. But a book is a perfect example. If I knew what was in every chapter, I had to write my book twice because the editor came back and said, it's too short. Your book's going to be puny, a teeny little book. If I would have thought about that, I could have just sat down and did the steps. Same thing with the marketing plan. You know, if, if I sat down last year to make my marketing plan, I probably would have had better results. I should have scoped it into what's my online plan, what's my offline plan, what groups do I want to go visit offline, what, uh, what press releases, what social media. Once we know exactly what we need to do, we just get in do mode, and we are on super pilot. So I'd like you guys to take a second and take one of your big rocks and just map out like three milestones that you need to move forward on that. And go.
you answers? more happiness in their life, even if you're happy. Put them up high. Let me see. Who wants more happiness? Okay, write this down. Finish more things. <laughs> That's it. Finishing really feels good. It gives you a sense of completion. When things are scattered all over, it's very disruptive. It's overwhelming, and it doesn't feel good. So you want more happiness? Finish a few more things. And you can finish yourself, or you can hand them off to somebody. So the thing you guys just scoped out you just made a to-do list you can easily delegate to somebody else to get your stuff done. It doesn't have to be you finishing, but finishing really feels good. Think about when you finished college even, or high school. You're like, wow, that's good. check, done. <laughs> Same thing in your business, the more checks you can have. Who's my checklist of people here? Okay, it feels good, right? Okay, who's ready for the, uh, the big tip? Well, let me, let's take some questions before I tell you the final answer. What questions do you have? Yeah. I have a nonprofit and my business. Okay. For the uh, action emails, would it? Can I do two different ones? Yeah. Or yeah. Okay. Or I would that be confusing? However, it works for you. So I'm I'm tool independent. I don't care what tools you guys use. If you've got an app that you like, use the app. If you're a spreadsheet person, if you're paper and pencil, just find a way that works for you. But have a catch-all category that you can go back later that you know this is my time to take action on everything people are waiting for. Because when it gets mixed in there with that other stuff, you're like, it gets confusing. You know what I'm saying? I kind of have a rule, if I can do it quickly in a couple minutes just to get it off my plate, it's easier than moving it to the folder so I have to revisit it later and shift mode because now I'm like, what was that about? And I'm taking time to get up to speed. If I can just nail that thing right away, it's done. Does that help? Isn't that a shiny object, though? What? Because that's what I always assume. Oh, I can just do that really quick. But to me, that's a shiny object that I shouldn't do. So here's how I decide whether I'm going to do it or not. Does it make? This is how I prioritize. Does it make me money? Will doing this action bring money in my business? Will it make me money? Will it save me money? If doing this action, will it save me some money? Paul. <laughs> Joining policy. Or will it systemize something? Anything you do more than two times should have a system. Anything you do more than three times should be automated so it runs it so you set it and forget it. Can you repeat that? Anything yep. you do more than what? Anything you do more than twice needs a, needs a system. A repeatable way that it gets done every single time. And if you do it three times, it should be automated. So you don't even have to think about it. For example, this boost stuff that was up here, you just change the date and the speaker, right? That's the system. Pretty much in the location now. Yes. <laughs> but same stuff every time. That's, she's doing this every week, so she's got a system. What other email questions or tips? Who wants to share a tip that works really well for you? What about Facebook? Avoid, avoid it completely, or can you use similar tactics with it? So I don't get on Facebook very much because I know myself. I'm going to just keep going. So I know you have to know your strengths and weaknesses. And I know when I get on there, I'm going to go all over. So I give myself just a couple times a week, I just peek in. Now LinkedIn, I'm on there a lot more. That's business stuff. So you can set up times where you do stuff. But definitely separate your thinking from your doing. Any other questions on email? Highest and best use. Example of highest and best use. If your company is um, a million dollar business or even a hundred thousand dollar business, a million dollar business is five hundred dollars an hour. A hundred thousand dollar business is about fifty dollars an hour, right? Highest and best use means you should only be doing things that are your pay grade or higher. Fifty dollars or higher are things you should be doing, the thinking activity. $49 or less, hire someone to do that. That's the highest and best use of your time. Stop doing those things that aren't your, your thing. 
stop cleaning the house, making copies, filing, writing newsletters. You can even outsource your blog if you want. Okay, what other questions? Um, highest and best use? Big rocks? Mm -hmm. yep. Nancy, how do you um, balance customizing? You know, if you're speaking to a person, not 20,000 people. How do you balance the system with blasting it out to everyone versus personalizing? Are you talking, you're talking emails? emails? Yeah. So, I blast out certain things that are a system that everybody needs to know, but I also reach out to four people a day as part of my, my customer service and just okay. say, do my Gmail and say, Carol, how are things going? You know, okay. I know your seven grandkids are in here this week. How is that? How are you holding up? Right? <laughs> Paul, I saw Paul, and I'm like, hey, Paul, I know you're working on your car, rebuilding it. It's been a year. How's it coming along? Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a pretty big project. That's a big rock, for sure. That's mm -hmm. a big rock. That's entirely outsourced, so. But on the other hand, I send out customized uh, or emails for my newsletters that everybody gets the same thing, or if I'm promoting a bench or something. So <laughs> it depends on the content. Okay, because you know when it's really personalized. <laughs> yeah. It's something that only goes to you. Some people what? actually get my stuff and say, wow, so nice to hear from you. I'm like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Okay, so it's personalized, yeah. just depending on you. Know. Yeah, most of my stuff is systemized. Though. Okay. There's a couple levels to personalization because in the emails that we send out each week, you know, I personalize the first few paragraphs at the top, but the rest of it is kind of standard and built with with systems. That's personalized to a, a map to, to a group. But yeah, then <coughs> the highest level of personalization is I guess one on one. Okay. So plug in a few personal with a template that yeah. Right. Gotcha. Right. Well, I, I, think you would do, I think you do a great job at that. Like after our phone call, you said Good. you were going to send me the information, <laughs> and you put a little note in there, but it was all yeah. the same information that I assume you copied and pasted from somewhere yeah. else. So I think you do a great job. Okay. Yeah, or maybe know. there's a way to take it a step above that. Yeah, probably. I think you're doing okay. okay. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. So systemize anything you can. And again, this is where I help companies, and a couple of you guys do the similar things. Figure out... Where we can get efficiency so you've got more time to do what you want to do in your life. That's the real, that's my passion. Like inefficiency is, is just drives me nuts. I love simplicity. The simple you can make it, the better. So let me give you the number one thing, and you'll have to write this on the back because I did not make a special place. It is the power hour. The power hour. P O W E R. H-O-U-R. So earlier today, I asked who was my morning people, who were my evening people. Do you guys all know in your day your, your energy ebbs and flows, right? Mm -hmm. What I see a lot of my clients doing is they're using their, their on-fire hour to do low, important things. Like, when you're feeling really good, you should not be filing. You should not be cleaning your house. It feel really good. <laughs> yeah, it might feel good, but it's really inefficient. You need to use that power hour on your hardest, most mental thinking tasks, your big rocks. So determine what is your power hour of the day and protect it at all costs. So here's what happens. We've got like three, three levels of attention. You've got the one when you are just in the zone. Who knows what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. You're like, I, I can... I'm Superman, I can get anything done. You've got kind of the one where you're just out of energy and you're like, I can't think about anything, I can't make a decision, I can't even decide what I want for dinner. That's, that's my lowest hour. What do I want to eat tonight? Like, I don't care, just food. And then you've got something in the middle where you can kind of do a little bit of both, right? Match your activities to your energy level. So the big rocks have to happen when you are on that high. Answering emails might be in the middle. And then the low stuff, like you don't, you could filing, cleaning, responding to emails, deleting emails, shifting stuff from folders. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you can just get that one, my only takeaway today, if you can figure out your power hour and protect it and use it on the right stuff, don't, don't waste it away. You will be so much more efficient. And I'm going to leave you with some closing comments. Does anyone listen to Darren Daly? Yeah, he's a 
the, the, the uh, Success Magazine guy. He's got this little video that comes out every morning. Darren Hardy. Darren, did I say the wrong name? Yeah. Well, Darren Daly is his newsletter. Yeah, it's Darren Hardy who does Darren Daly. Oh, okay, got it. He was yesterday, I thought this is so appropriate, appropriate to tell you guys. He's talking about using your mornings wisely. So pretty much don't waste your day is what I'm telling you to. Be efficient. And he kind of broke this down. He said if you're in your 30s, who's, who's in the 30s here? Okay, if you're in your 30s, you have about 10,000 mornings left before you die or expire, I guess I'll say expire, <laughs> to really make an impact. 10,000 work days to make a difference. Mm. Where are my 40s? What's in the 40s? Okay, you guys have about 7,800 days left to get out and decide how you're going to spend your day. And in my 50s, we have about 5,000 left. And I didn't go any higher wow. than that. So his main message was, do something that matters with your day. Be proactive. Don't waste being in the zone on low attention activities. And use your every day to move the needle forward on your big box, the things that will really make a difference. So that is how I'm going to leave you guys today. If any of this resonates with you and you want to come work with me and systemize your business and take your time back, please come talk to me. We can have a coffee or something. And on the bottom of your sheet, there's a little box there. I love to give each one of you a complimentary session to smash through your biggest productivity challenge. Whatever is holding you back at productivity, let's jump on a call, smash through that, and get it out of the way. So thanks for letting me be the kickoff speaker. Absolutely. Good. Thank you.